Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Every month, we pick a new theme to explore together through art making and play. In these workshops, you can watch along any time you have time to make, or listen, or just watch. We encourage young people, families, and creative people of all ages to join us every week on Saturdays at 11 a.m. as we release a new episode. These videos are for you. Whether you want to join us on Saturday when they become available or any time you want to make. We're so glad you're watching. Have you missed a week? Check out artstarts.com slash explores dash online or any of our videos on YouTube or Facebook to check out an episode you've missed. Okay, let's explore together. Before we begin making, let's review the three rules of explorers. We've got rules in quotes here because they're less rules and more like guidelines or things that we like to have in mind before we start making together. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by checking in with ourselves every day before we start making. Maybe we didn't have a good night's sleep or we're feeling really good today. Whatever it is, we want to take the time to check in with ourselves. We also practice respect by doing the same thing for each other. And if we're not making alone, we're making with other grown-ups, or other youth, or friends, or classmates. We want to practice respect by asking them how they're feeling as well, so we can be mindful of each other while we make together. Another way we practice respect is with our tools. That can be about putting them away when we're all finished or using them safely. If somebody else is waiting for a turn to use a tool, we can use our words or our signs and share. We can respect each other by asking how long they'll need the tool so we can move on to something else, or if we need it now, we can let them know when we will be done and tell them we will pass them the tool when we're finished. We can also practice respect by acknowledging the land. So this space that you see here is my studio space. And I'm on the stolen or unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations as an uninvited guest on these lands. One of the ways I practice respect is by acknowledging where I'm coming from and to be respectful of the lands, waters, and to the indigenous people who are here and who have been here since time immemorial while I have access to these lands. You can practice respect by finding out the territories and lands where you are watching and making from today, and by being the best guest you can and respecting the host nations, the lands, and waterways where you live. The second rule is that nothing is for keeps. I encourage you whenever possible to take things from the recycling bin. You can take paper that's already been drawn on, or has writing on the back, or is ripped, and then you don't have to feel worried about ripping it up yourself, or crumpling it, or just trying something out. It doesn't have to be good or perfect the first time, because it's not for keeps. And when we're all finished, I encourage you to take it apart. That helps really make it so that it isn't for keeps. Because if you know you're gonna take it apart at the end, you don't have to make any finished thing. You can try all the things and ways of making. Our last rule is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or even to turn out bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful and creative ideas are good regardless of what happens after we try something. If you already know how something is going to turn out, if you've done it before, we can be open to trying something completely new and practice surprise. And if it doesn't turn out, that's okay. It's not for keeps. These are the three rules that we like to keep in mind when we explore together every week. Okay, let's get making together.
Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. This week we're going to be exploring comics and I'm really excited to explore along with you. For today's activity, I thought we could explore lettering. It doesn't matter what language you decide to make your comic in, you're going to need to have a way for your characters to express themselves. So whether that's actually using language um, or letters or uh, different kinds of speech bubbles or uh, any way that you can think of, you're going to want to explore different ways that you can, um, you can show that characters are speaking to each other on a page. Oh, before we get started, if you're going to be exploring along with me today, and remember, you don't have to. You can just watch this video and, and, uh, and check out what you see as I'm making. And then when you're inspired to make something, you can go make something or you can make along with me um, as we explore letters together. So do you have any paper? As always, I like to encourage you to grab paper from the recycling bin. It doesn't have to be perfect paper. It doesn't have to uh, be clear of any marks. It could be any color. Uh, it could have printing already on it. I think I saw one there, yep. Um, so it doesn't have to be perfect paper because nothing we are doing today is for keeps. We're just trying things out. So whatever paper you can find and then a mark making tool. And a mark making tool is anything that makes a mark. I have some markers here today. I also have some pencil crayons with me. You could use a crayon, you could use pencil, you could use anything that you find. I like to use marker when I'm exploring with you uh, because it's a little bit easier for you to see on my video, but anything you use is gonna be great. Okay. So I'm going to move a few of these things over to the side so we've got a little bit more room. Move my little host over here with the sandwich board and you know who I am. Great. Okay, so when I'm talking about two characters talking to each other, you could just, you could just use some circles. to define two people. Yeah, I'm gonna make a full stick body here. And so what we want is we wanna practice them talking to each other. And so let's pretend that they're saying hi, something really simple. They've just met each other in the comic. And so this character is gonna say hello to this character. Well, to begin with, before we even put in the letters, I think that what we need to do is we need to go, um, they're going to be going, they're going to be looking in this direction. And so I'm going to put some eyes here just to show that they're looking in this direction. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. If I had put the faces facing forward, then it wouldn't really look like they were facing each other. And that might actually say something. And you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do this here so we can see the difference. I have two pieces of paper ready to go. Okay, so there is one character. And there's a second character. So they're not really looking at each other. Now when they say hi, there's going to be a kind of a different feeling going on here, right? Because they, they're facing each other. They actually want to see each other. They want to, um, they want to show that they want to greet each other. Whereas these two, they might be a bit more aloof or shy, or maybe they're even angry with each other. They don't want to say hello. Maybe they're meeting for the first time at kindergarten and they're frustrated that they, uh, that they had to say goodbye to their parents. And so they're looking, they're looking away. And so already before I've even added some words to it, I'm already expressing some potential narrative or story ideas of uh, how these two characters are connected. Let's keep going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another piece of paper so that we can try out lettering 
in different ways. So I'm going to start with, we said it, we said it was just going to be high, right? So I'm just going to write in my handwriting, high. Oh, and I put an exclamation mark there. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, basically the same. There you go, high. What do you think? What do you observe? If I was to shift it down here, does it have the same feeling? The exclamation mark does something, doesn't it? it kind of implies that it's um, enthusiastic, that they are happy to see each other. What if I was just to have one? What do you notice? Who's talking? Could it be both characters saying the same thing at once? What if I was to add a line, you know, like a speech bubble? Did that change anything? It does show that this is the character that says hi. But I mean, it still, it, it still feels like they've enthusiastically said hi. What if I was going to make the speech bubble? Go in both directions. What do you think? Saying it at the same time? I still get the impression that they're kind of shy, but they're equally shy now. What if I was to go high again? Almost the same writing. There we go. What do you think? The way that I read this page is that this character has said hi before this character. Because when I'm reading in English, I read from left to right and top to bottom. So as I'm going along the page with my eyes, I hit these letters first. And so this character says hi first, and then I keep going, and then I hit this one, and then this character has said it second. So this character is responding to this character's uh, greeting. Because I put this on the same line, both of these characters said it at the same time. What if I wanted to use one speech bubble still, but show that they said hi at different times. So I'm going to write hi again. And I'm going to write hi down here. But this time, I'm going to show that they spoke. They spoke. And then still put it in one bubble. You see, it's all still connected. It has a different feeling than this one, doesn't it? It still has high twice. It still has the two uh, speech bubbles, directional um, starts over here. This one pointing to the right and this one pointing to the left. There's this one pointing to the right and this one pointing to the left. But I put these ones together. So they're still responding to each other. But this one still feels like it's at the same time, doesn't it? Maybe they're not overlapping. Maybe this one, they're saying it at exactly the same time and they're kind of embarrassed because they spoke over each other. Whereas this one still feels like they said it very closely to each other, but this one was directly responding to this one. It couldn't happen without each other. And that's why I put the speech bubbles around both of them. Okay, so that's just the outside, but I've basically been writing it the same way, just in my handwriting. What if we wanted it so that this character, the one on the right, was more excited than the character on the left? What are some of the things that we could try? Well, one of the ways that I could think of is to make the high louder. 
And if you've ever written in all caps, so all capital letters, you know that there's a kind of emphasis, kind of energy that happens when you have those, uh, when you have capital letters. I think I still need an exclamation mark. We're gonna see, rip this down. I'm gonna see if I can fit this into my existing speech bubble. But you can keep writing the speech bubble. And remember, if you're taking things from the recycling bin, you've got lots of paper that you can pull from. There we go. Hi. <laughs> it's kind of like this character is yelling or maybe maybe they're um surprised maybe they're kind of angry right look look at it. it's the same letter hi but this one feels very serious and i'm gonna add that exclamation mark What do you notice? They're the same letters. They're saying the same things, but just by changing the weight, the thickness of these letters and the case, so from um, sentence case to uppercase, so all caps and then uh, a capital and a lowercase, I've made it feel kind of different. I didn't have to change these characters in any way. I just changed the letters. What if I made it so that this character said hi and this character was actually scared of how intense this hi was? What could we do? So do you see what I did? I made um, some, some dots, so ellipses. So three dots leading to the high and then three dots leading away, like they're hesitant, like there was a pause before they said hi. I'm gonna add a little bit of white so we can cover the, the other high behind it. There we go. Right, so this character was really excited and said hi in big, bold capital letters. And this character was like, okay, hi, a little bit, little bit shy. You notice I also made the letters smaller. So they're, they're still in letter case. My, my hi, so my handwriting, usually I uh, put circles over my eyes. Sometimes I'll also put circles at the bottom of my exclamation marks. And so there's something kind of big about this one. In, but it's still not quite as big. So these letters look like they're a little bit smaller, but they're, they're heavier, they're thicker. There's more weight to these ones. And so they almost seem like they're bigger and louder than this one. This one feels more enthusiastic and bright than this one. And this one feels kind of shy and unsure or hesitant. Let's keep going. <clears throat> so remember how these characters are facing apart from each other. And so what if we wanted to do the high again, but make it so that, actually, I'm gonna steal this one right here. I feel like this works really well. So this one with the, the shy high, he <laughs> shy high, like how it's rhyming there. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. one up here because that's how the speech bubble kind of looks. I'll rip off over here so we have a little bit more space. There you go. I love to rip paper and so when we're prototyping and trying things out, um, ripping paper and layering it means that you can use marker and you don't have to use your eraser. You can just see what happens and layer on top 
with all these extra scraps that you're making. And it really shows that none of this is for keeps. You could take a picture when you were all done if you wanted to, and, or you could just take this and then draw uh, an actual comic. But right now we're just prototyping. We're just making a draft. So it doesn't really, it doesn't have to be perfect. So you see, I've done it again. Where I've done the dots, but this one, I made the speech bubble a little bit bigger. And I ended up having the letters be a little bit bigger. So they're still kind of shy, but it feels like this character maybe has a louder voice than this character. What if this character was angry? And actually, they, let's say they were both angry. They don't want to talk to each other. Oh, I just had a thought. What if, what if we put it on the other side? How does that change it? Oh, I like that. Do you see all this space here? The space also kind of says something. It shows the distance. So here, I'm gonna bring this back over here and show that. So they're facing each other. They're, they're using the space. Remember when I said when they were facing each other, there's kind of a, they're implying that they want to face each other. They want to engage. They want to see or sign or say something facing each other. There's, there's respect. There's uh, acknowledgement of each other. This one, they're facing, they're facing away. They're, they're kind of facing you, the reader. They're not making eye contact. And by putting the lettering on the outside, we're actually emphasizing, we're making more of a point that there's this distance between them just by moving the lettering out to the outside. I like it. Okay, so but what now what we're going to say is they're angry. So these were kind of shy. How can we express anger with our lettering? And so I, st I still think I like the bold, right? I, I, like, I like that bold lettering as if you're shouting it. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine this lettering with my speech bubble and I'm going to make the speech bubble as bold as the as the lettering. Here we go. What do you think? Do you think that comes across as angry? Or do you think it comes across as loud? I still feel like that high is more loud than it is angry. You know what, I'm gonna do the capitals again, but I'm gonna use facial features to help me rewrite my, um, my high. What I mean by that is I'm gonna pretend like my speech bubble was a face. And if you think about angry faces, usually your eyes are squinted, you're angry, you've got a frowny face, and then your eyebrows as well point down. And so using that kind of angle of the, uh, of the eyes, I'm going to draw my letters as if they were frowning. My, my letters, eyebrows. Here we go. What do you think? We getting there? Does that feel more angry than that one? I think so. I think it's starting to get more angry. I think sometimes when we're angry, we feel heavy as well. And so I'm going to make the bottom of the speech bubble heavier. There we go. There. I'm really getting the sense that this character is angry. I think it would help if I put actually the, there, the eyebrows. And so now there's a repetition. So the lettering is repeating the facial features that you're seeing 
in the character here and really emphasizing. So we're using the lettering to, to really convey um, different emotions. So they're angry. They say they're angry. And remember how we were saying left to right? So this one's higher than this high right now. And if I left it like this, maybe even just a little bit higher, you read this one before you read this one. So this character is going high. And this character is kind of startled in response and goes high. You could start bringing in um, some exclamation marks, some question marks that also can help convey that emotion. And look, see, we haven't really changed the picture. The only picture, or sorry, the change, the only change that I have done to the picture since we started was adding frowny eyebrows. But the picture hasn't changed. So the lettering itself can really change how the story is done. And if you drew um, three different pages of the same picture, but just changed the lettering each time or changed what was said, you could build a story without needing to have a whole bunch of drawings or details. Um, and you could just practice getting really, really good at uh, writing your different kinds of letters. Let's do one more before we wrap up. So we kind of explored emotion using uh, these, these speech bubbles. And we use the same words for each one of them. I'm going to stick with high. I, I want to see if we can do this all the way through using just high. One of the other things that we can do with lettering is we can convey personality. And so if this, if this character here was always angry, then maybe you would always write their letters with these eyebrows or tilted like this to show that that's, that's them being angry. But what if this character was always fancy? They loved bow ties and pretty dresses and uh, sweet candies and fancy shoes. And they always had, they always kept their backpack very, very clean. And their hair was always very nicely brushed and styled. How could we still drawing just the stick man or stick character like this, how could we show that this character was very fancy, really liked fancy things. Can you think of fancy lettering? What does fancy lettering look like to you? To me, fancy lettering is handwriting. Oh, I picked a hard one because I don't actually like capital H in handwriting very much, but let's try it. There we go. And then <laughs> there we go. And then uh, can I do an exclamation mark this fancy? There we go. Ooh, it's almost hard to read. There we go. So there is my fancy high. And you know what? I'm also going to, around the outside of my speech bubble, I'm going to put a flower. So like they would wear a flower in their hair or um, in their uh, coat pocket or on their lapel showing that they, uh, they've got a, a flower design. And then maybe, you know what, I'll put another flower over here. That kind of gives the impression that they're friendly too. There. So there's the high, very, very fancy. I made it kind of bigger. That's also because I was using my Sharpie and it's easier for me to draw bigger, but you could do this smaller so that it's a, a smaller size. Now it kind of looks like they brightly said, hi, even though they're facing away, maybe they're kind of shy. I could color in little red cheeks on this character to show that they're, they're shy, um, but they brightly say hello. And then this character goes, hi, and maybe I'll move this down a little bit. I could also change the direction of the uh, the speech, the start of the speech bubble. Here, I'm going to do that. I'm going to cover it with some white. Color it in so that it looks like this was all like this. There we go. And then I'm going to change the speech direction bubble. Over here. 
so it's pointed up a little bit. There we go. Great. So now it's down there. So hi, real fancy and hi. Just by changing the way that I drew the letters. And so if every time this character spoke, if I was to do it or signed or however they communicated, right? Maybe, maybe if you did think bubbles, maybe they're not actually saying something. This person could read minds or maybe they are gesturing hello or uh, maybe they're dancing hello. So this, this little line down here says that they're, they're saying hi, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're using their mouth and that could be part of your story. But if every time you wrote this character's uh, words in cursive, in handwriting, you'd get a personality that came across from this character. This character, if they were always with the eyebrows down, would always be cross and kind of grumpy. There are lots of different ways that you can explore lettering and I've only, I've only scratched the surface. I've only tried a few with you today. I encourage you to try different ways. And if you wanna share your making and what you discovered, we'd love to hear from you. You can check out more episodes of Art Starts Explores on our website at artstarts.com slash explores dash online or on our Facebook page or YouTube pages. We always have something new to share on, on Saturdays. I'll see you next week as we continue to explore comics. But first, like I like to do in all of our sessions, is I'm going to take a second or two to clean up because we want to show respect to our space by always taking the time at the end of our making sessions to clean up. Okay, I look forward to seeing you another week. Bye.